हेलो एवरीबॉडी दिस इज डॉक्टर विशाल त्रिवेदी फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बायो साइंसेज एंड बायो इंजीनियरिंग आई आई टी गुवाहाटी बिफोर यू स्टार्ट द एक्सपेरिमेंट आइडेंटिफाई द पोटेंशियली हजार्ड मटेरियल इक्विप्ड फॉर परफॉर्मिंग द एक्सपेरिमेंट्स इट इज रिकमेंडेड टू गो थ्रू द मटेरियल सेफ्टी डाटा शीट सप्लाइड विद द केमिकल टू अंडरस्टैंड देयर पोटेंशियल हजार्ड एंड द सेफ्ट यूजेज विच मीन्स बिफोर यू ओपन द कंटेनर बिफोर यू नो दैट दिस एक्सपेरिमेंट हैज़ टू बी परफॉर्म्ड वट आर द केमिकल्स आर रिक्वायर्ड यू हैव टू रीड द मटेरियल सेफ्टी डाटा शीट सो दैट यू नो वट काइंड ऑफ मटेरियल इट इज इन वॉट वे इट कैन एक्चुअली कॉज द डैमेज टू योर बॉडी एंड हाउ मच एक्सपोजर लिमिट इज एक्चुअली नॉट लीगल फॉर द ह्यूमन बींग एंड and so on and that all machine material the information is available in the material data sheet so what is the material data sheet material data sheet is a kind of a safety information what is been provided along with the chemical so that you will know whether it is a fire hazard whether it is causing the any kind of burn or whether it is having the strong acid or strong base so that it can actually damage the skin or whether it is a carcinogen so that it can cause the carcinogenic effects so let's understand what is the material data sheet a material data sheet is a document provided by the manufacturer or supplier that contain information about the potential hazard of that material and msds comprised of sections on product informations like it will give you the product name names and the address of the manufacturers and the suppliers it will give you the emergency number so in case there will be a spillage there could be a exposure to the particular student or to the particular person it will actually going to tell you the emergency number so that you can call those numbers and they are actually going to help you in terms of providing the solutions how to handle that then it is going to tell you the indicator of the material it is going to tell you the physical property of the material fire or explosion hazard data so it is going to tell you whether the material is having a it is in uh, going to take catch up the fire or not whether it is explosive or not Uh, it is going to tell you the toxicology data which means it is going to tell you what is the uh, toxicology exposure limit what is the ld50 of that particular material and also on uh, it is going to tell you how to if you got burn or if you got the exposure of this particular material what kind of first aid you can actually do in case there will be accident and information on safe handling usage storage and disposal which means all the information what you require before you use this chemical will be provided in a data sheet and that is called as the material safety data sheet or the msds you might have observed certain hazard warning symbols also known as pictogram on the chemical container these symbols allows immediate identification of the material as a hazard for example if you see this kind of signal that means it is a inflammable material which means this material is not it is going to catch up the fire very soon so you should uh, take keep this material away from the fire whenever you are using uh, similarly this kind of uh, symbol it is oxidizing material which means it is actually a material which will get oxidized and it can cause uh, other kind of injury to your uh, skin and other kind of injury so one of the classical oxidizing material is like bleach for example then you have this kind of symbol that actually will coin that this is a very very toxic material so it can cause very toxic material like it it can be a poison or it can be uh, life threatening so its ld50 is going to be very low uh then you have this kind of symbol which actually says that the chemical is corrosive in nature which means it could be a strong acid or strong base so this is uh, I, uh, you can actually follow through some of these uh, sigma eldritch uh, catalogs and that actually will tell you uh, and i have given you a link here that actually if you follow it will actually going to tell you that how the msds actually will look like so if you uh, click this link it is actually going to take you to the sigma eldritch website and it is actually going to tell you a prototype of the msds document and that actually is going to have all this information uh then these are the prohibited or not recommended actions so let's see what are these options first option is you should not sit on the laboratory benches because these benches are meant for performing the experiments if you sit on these laboratory benches you are not only 
uh, exposing yourself to the chemical what is being spilled on these benches, but also it is actually going to uh, cause uh, hindrance to others to work and in some cases it may not be uh, good enough. Uh, never drink or eat inside the laboratory. So, because the laboratory whether it is a biological laboratory or the chemical laboratory or any other kind of laboratory is always having different types of chemicals. You are always using different types of biological samples like uh, patient samples or the microbes. So, if you take the food or you drink the water inside the laboratory, you are actually indirectly exposing yourself for these chemicals or to the microbes. Do not handle your contact lenses or apply cosmetics in the laboratory. So, when you are in a laboratory, you do not handle your contact lenses, means you are, you should not put a lot of makeup because all these makeup or all this kind of uh, material, the, if you put, suppose you are putting a lot of creams and all that, is actually are kind of a fire hazard. So, if there will be a, da is, uh, there will be a accident, the chances that you may get more injury than if you, you do not have these. Uh, never touch any chemical or reagent with, the, with bare hands. So, as I said, you know, you always have to wear the gloves before you open the container or you have to uh, perform the experiments. Never try to taste or smell any chemicals or reagents. So, you, you, have, pro, you have been provided a uh, material safety data sheets and that actually gives you the complete information about what is the material, how it look like and all that kind of information. So, that is why there is no need to taste or smell these chemicals because that actually is going to expose you to the toxic chemicals or the toxic fumes what is being produced from these chemicals and that is not good for your health. Never pipette any of the chemical through your mouth. So, that anyway we are going to discuss in detail that you should never do a mouth sucking or the with the glass pipettes. If the chemicals are taken from the original container and you happen to weigh out more than the amount required, never transfer back the excess amount to the original container. So, that is very, very important uh, thing that for example, if you I required a 100 mg chemicals and by chance, by mistake, when I took out the first scoop and I taken out 120 mg of the compound. Okay. So, that case you cannot just pour that 20 mg because you need only 100 mg for preparing certain uh, chemicals or certain solutions. Uh, so, you cannot just put that 20 mg back to the original stock. That depends on the cost of that particular chemical. So, in case the cost is very low and you can be able to bear that you can throw the 20 mg of that compound then it is fine. Otherwise, if it is very costly and you are actually want to uh, you know save that particular chemical then you should not put that into the original container. Instead, you just keep it in a append off, put it into a separate container and whenever you are going to make the solution next time use this 20 mg first and then you can take out the extra powder from the original stock. Because why it is important that when you are transferring it back and you are putting it uh, the leftover chemicals back into the original stock, you are actually contaminating the original stock because when you are transferring it, it is possible that you may add some more extra chemicals and that is may uh, you know because there are many sources through which you may get the chemical like if your spatula may not be clean enough, your other you know the append of what you are using to weighing is may not be very clean and sometimes these uh, append offs also have the some of the chemicals which are leaching out from these append offs. So, that is the way you actually going to contaminate your original stock. So, if you contaminate your original stock, the whatever the experiment you will do subsequently are going to have the that contamination uh, into the picture. If you concentrated acid are taken are to be diluted, never add water to the concentrated acid concentrated acid should be added to the water drop wise. So, this is very important and that anyway we are going to discuss in detail when we are going to discuss how to prepare the uh, solutions. So, never you are going to add the water into the strong acid because that is the way you are actually going to create uh, exothermic reactions and that is not uh, recommended. Instead, what you are going to do is you take the water and add the uh, acid drop wise. Same is true for 
for the base as well. Never leave your experiment unattended. So while you are doing an experiment, you have to be around so that in case something happened to your experiment, in case some uh, accident happens, it get blast or you know other kind of fire hazards or some spillage, you should be around so that you can be able to take care of the situation. Uh, never point the open end of your glassware or vial towards yourself or any other person which means when you are opening a container you should always open a container in such a way so that the face or the mouth has to be away from your face and it should not be uh, uh, towards some other person as well because in case you are opening a vial and there is a uh, there is a gas or with uh, or the pressure is being built inside the water will going to spill or the liquid is going to spillage spill outside and that spill can be on your face. You might have experienced when you are opening a, you know soda bottles like for example, if you open a soda bottle and if you open it towards your face, the all the liquid will fall onto your face. That is why when you open the, such, uh, the, uh, the any kind of chemical bottles, you do not know what could be the pressure inside that is why it is important that you should open it keeping the vials mouth away from your body and it should not be towards some, somebody else as well. Now apart from that the good lab practices also says that besides whatever we discussed so far the recommended as well as not recommended material you also should maintain your laboratory notebook which means the laboratory notebook should be self explanatory it should have all the details what is required. So laboratory all scientists have the obligation to prepare the written report of the results of the experiment work. Since this record may be studied by many individual it must be completed in a clear concise orderly and accurate manner. This means that the procedural details observations and the result must be recorded in a laboratory notebook while the experiment is being performed. Okay. So, in a laboratory notebook you are going to have the four major items, one is introduction, second is observation, the third is result and discussion and the fourth is the literature search. So, let us see how what are the material is required to have the laboratory notebooks. So, in a lab, typical laboratory notebook you could have the introduction. So, suppose I am starting an experiment 1 and before I should start I should have all these uh, columns, I should have a introduction sections, I should have experimental sections, I should have a data and calculation section and then I should have a result and discussion sections. So, let us discuss each an individual item and let us know what are the things you have to keep in this particular section and so that your laboratory notebook should provide the accurate and reproducible information for others to follow. So, introduction, the introduction is, uh, is required before you even start the experiments because the introduction will have two sections, one is called the objective or the purpose of the experiment and the other one is as called as the theory of the sections which means you should know what is the objective of your experiments which means what objective you are going to achieve if you are doing this experiments. So, suppose I, I have an objective to understand how a people are uh, seeing a uh, you know through eyes for example, I want to understand the uh, you know do how the people are actually observing or how people are actually perceiving the light stimulus. Okay. So, for that particular type of object, so that is going to be my objective that I have to design an experiment to understand how the people are perceiving our light stimulus. Okay. So, that is the objective number one. Number two on what theory I am going to follow this. So, for example, I know that light is made up of, of different different small small light small particles which are of different wavelength. So, uh, these wavelengths are associated with different amount of energy. So, this kind of theory I have to first accumulate before I design an experiment because if I want to uh, explore this kind of questions, I have to have an objective and then I should have a theory because on this theory only you are actually going to design an experiment and then 
accordingly you are going to acquire the different types of um, equipments, you are going to acquire the chemi chemicals and so on. So, thus this section begins with the three or four sentence statement of the objective or the purpose of the experiment. For preparing this statement, ask yourself what are the goals of these experiments? This statement is followed by a brief discussion of the theory behind the experiments, which means every experiment is based on the pre-existing literature, the every experiment is based on some logics, every experiment is based on a particular type of theory. Now the second is the experimental part. So in the experimental part, you are going to have the table of the material and reagent. So once you design the experiments and once I design the experiment, I should first note down what are the materials are required, what are the reagents are required. So, so that I should collect these materials and should prepare the reagents what is required and I should also uh, go through with the literature and collect all the recipes what is required to prepare these reagents and all these has to be documented into my notebook. And then I have to prepare a list of equipments required so that I should arrange all these equipments and I should ensure that they are in a working conditions and all the equipments are available for the usage. Then you have to prepare a scheme or the flow chart which is actually going to be a part of the protocol which means you should in uh, you should un go through with the protocol, understand each and every step, what is the requirement of that step, what are the precautions you should take while you are doing this experiments and that you will do when you are preparing a flow chart and then you record the procedure which means you are actually going to re uh, document the procedure in which you are actually going to add the chemicals or you are actually going to perform the experiments. So, this section. Uh, begins with the list of all reagent and material used in the experiments. The sources of all the chemicals and the concentration of the solution should be listed. The instrument is listed with a reference to the company name and the model number. A flow chart is described to stepwise procedure for the experiment should be included after the list of the equipment required because that is very important that you should provide the equipment, you should provide the model, you should provide the company because the those who are going to perform or going to reproduce this experiment should use these same set of equipments. Then the third is the data and the calculations. So you have to record all the raw data including the printouts, then you have to method of calculation with statistical analysis. And then you have to present the final data in the form of the table, graph or the figure, whatever will be appropriate. So this section is very important that you should record all the raw data, you should keep the raw data uh, ready for others to follow and you should do all the calculations, you should put all these equations into your data register so that people will be able to use those equations and will be able to do back calculations to check that you are not making any errors. So all the raw data from the experiment are to be recorded directly in your notebook, not on separate sheet of the paper or the paper towels. It is very important that you should not uh, record these raw data into uh, you know slip pads or uh, rough papers because you know you have to record all the rough data raw data onto your uh, data registers. So what is mean by the raw data is like I am get, I am doing a protein estimation. So I when I did the buffer I got a reading of 0 0.05. Okay. And then I did the sample, so that sample is gave me a signal a reading of 0 0.06. Now this is the rough raw data actually, but if I want to do a corrected data, what I will do is I will going to uh, calculate S prime and that is going to be S minus B, which means I am going to correct the, the background information, which means I am going to have the 0.55, which is actually a corrected information. So, this is actually going to be a corrected uh, value, uh, experimental value which is different from the raw value because raw value you have to put into your data register or the notebook and the blank also you have to put and that is how you are going to do a calculation to calculate the calculated values or the experimental value and 
these calculations are very important for others to verify that you have done the things properly. Uh, if you are going to note these on separate sheets paper or paper towels, it could be possible that you may lost those paper towels or separate notebooks and then that information may be lost. Uh, calculation involves the data must be included for at least one series of measurements, proper statistical analysis must be included in this sections. And then it comes the results and the discussions. So, results and discussion comes with the conclusions, then you compare with your results with the known values, you calculate the discussion of the significance of the data, you are going to ask the question whether the original objectives are being achieved or not or if it is not been achieved then what could be the reason can I verify some more experiment and see whether the experiments and then you are going to a literature search. So, this is the most important section of your write up because it answers the questions did you achieve your proposal goal and objectives because once you are going to done with the experiments you are going to get the data then you are going to analyze that data and that actually is going to give you the final results. So, final results are actually going to analyze that and then you are going to compare that with the existing literature, you are going to compare it and say whether the, uh, the objectives are being answered or not or whether the objectives are partially been answered, but you have uh, still have the unresolved questions. So, then you can actually uh, uh, you know uh, design uh, additional experiments and that is how you can be able to answer the questions whether you have achieved the objectives or not. Any conclusion that you must be supported by the experiment result, it is often possible to compare data with the known values and results from literature. If this is feasible, calculate the percent error and explain any differences. If problems were encountered in the experiment, these should be outlined with the possible remedies for the future experiment. So, in some cases it could be possible that experiment may not work, it may have some troubleshooting, it may have some ex, you know problems that because of that the you could not get the desired results. So, in those cases you should also note down the troubleshooting then you put those troubleshooting into the picture and then you again repeat the experiment and see whether the results are being achieved or not, whether the objectives are being achieved or not. Uh, ultimately, all these you have to do a library reference and all these references has to be cited at the end of your write up so that you know that so that the people who are going to follow your experiment and the write up should be know that okay these are the citations on based on which the experiments are being planned, these are the citations he has used to compare the data for what he got from the literature. And these are the data what he has or these are the literature what he has used to compare the experiments with the you know known literature and that is how he has concluded that this experiment is working or not working or these are the additional modifications are required or not. So, all these is very important. So, this is uh, all about the good lab practices. In summary, what we have discussed, we had discussed about the good lab practices, how to be uh, remain in the lab, when you enter into lab, what are the actions you should take and what are the precautions you should take uh, and what are the action you should take when there will be an accident and fire hazards, when you open a, you know or, or when you start opening a chemical, what are the in what are the information you required and what what that information can be used to avoid the uh, the exposure as well as the other kind of accidents. And lastly, we have also discussed about the notebooks or the data register and what are the components are required to document the experiments in your data registers. So, with this I would like to conclude my lecture here. Thank you.